tonight, I want you to get a hold of your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Psalms 46. And tonight, I'm not going to be long because I believe we need to spend a little time at the altar. Tonight, this message has been birthed out of the waiting room of pain. And I'm going to give it to you the way I got it. Book of Psalms, chapter 46, verse 10, reads like this. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the earth. And verse 11 reads like this. The Lord of hosts is with us, and the God of Jacob is our refuge. Heavenly Father, I come before you tonight. Humble and your servant. Lord, I stand before this church, this great group of people, Lord God, humbled and grateful. For Lord, you've called me to minister and you've called me to lead and you've called me to help people. You've called our family to do that. And Lord, we won't let anything stop us from doing that. We will do your will. We will submit our lives. And we're so grateful tonight for your beautiful presence that we sense here this evening. Father, tonight I ask that you would guide every single word that would come out of my mouth that would minister and that would encourage your people here this evening, oh God. And Father, tonight we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a good, good hand of praise tonight. And before you're seated, look to your neighbor and tell him, be still. You may be seated. Be still. Tonight, I want to take a few moments to talk to you about being still in the presence of God. Being still in the presence of God. And why does the Bible say, be still and know that I am God? Because I believe God wants, to, God wants us to walk in greater power. And we don't walk in power because of who we are but because of who he is, because of who he is. We don't walk in any kind of power because of our gifts, our ability, or our talents. We walk in power because of who he is, the one that saved us, the one that has rescued us, the one that has healed us, and the one that has changed our lives. I heard a preacher once say, all we have to do is manage the seed that is in us. Because 1 Peter 1.3 says this, Having been born again, not of a corruptible seed, but an incorruptible seed, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Church, we need to understand something, that God is the God of this universe. God is the God that is able to touch, change, transform, heal, and change your life. And if we are going to ever experience the power of God the way he wants us to experience it, then we've got to understand who he really is in our lives. Because I believe God wants us to walk in greater power. But the only way we're going to walk in a greater power is when we understand who he is. And the way we're going to understand that is when we're still in the presence of God. Anybody need any power tonight? I'll ask you again. Anybody need any power tonight? I need God's power. I need God's power. And the only way that I'm going to receive more of the power of God is when I learn to be still in the presence of God. Now, what does the Bible say here in, in uh, Psalms 46? We, 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 uh, as we look at it, it's pretty powerful. And this is what the Lord began to show me. See, we can't understand Verse 10 of 46 until we understand what verse 11 really means. Because verse 11 meaning this, the Lord of hosts is with us. The Lord 
of hosts is with us. In other words, the Lord of hosts is the one who directs the armies of heaven. And if the Lord of hosts is with us and on our side, who can be successfully against us? The Lord of hosts, the one that begins to orchestrate the angels. The Lord of hosts, the one that is in control of heaven and earth. I don't know if you're hearing this here, but the Lord of hosts, the one that controls the armies of heaven. But the second part of verse 11 pertains to us, meaning the God of Jacob is our refuge. And who was Jacob? He was a cheater. He was a sinner. So the word is saying God is our refuge, yours and mine, the unworthy and the fortress uh, 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 that, 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 uh, and he's our, he's our fortress. In other words, when you put the, 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 the God of the Most High and you put the God of Jacob, you put that together, what does that mean? Is that God is able to take us under his wing and hide us under his wing. And then the one that has created the universe and the one that has created the heavens and the earth, he is with us. And when you understand that, now we can learn to be still in his presence. See, when we understand that the Lord of hosts is with us, that is the Lord of the angelic armies of heaven, then we can be still and know that he is God. See, we can't know that he is God until we understand how powerful God is. See, sometimes I think we... We, we, we can forget how powerful God is because I think sometimes we come into the house of God and we get cleaned up and we begin to go on our daily routine and God begins to bless us and then we forget how powerful God is. See, because back in the day, the court system and the world and your family members and your friends said that you will never be anything and that you will never change and that you will never amount to anything. But look at you today. You're walking in dignity. You're walking in anointing. You're walking in power, not because of your ability, but because of the power of God upon your life. But when we begin to understand the power that we can begin to walk in, is when we could be still. See, when we are being still in the presence of God, something happens. You know what happens? God begins to breathe on us. God begins to breathe on us. Job 33 verse 4 says this, The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. The only reason you're here today is because God breathed on you. God breathe on you in that jail cell. God breathe on you on that street corner. God breathe on you when you were all messed up and you were high. God breathe on you when your spouse walked out on you. God breathe on you when they threw away the key at you. God breathe on you when nobody else wanted you. And even to this very day. And we understand his power. And if you're going through a trial, you're going through a situation, if you learn to be still in his presence, he'll breathe on you. He'll breathe life into you. He'll breathe anointing in your life. He'll breathe power into your life. God will almighty gives us life. There are three things that happens when God breathes on you, when you're still in the presence of God. Number one. Is when we are still in God's prayer, when we are still, God breathes peace in our lives. He breathes peace in our lives. John 14, 27 reads like this, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. See, the peace comes from the helper of the Holy Spirit, the comforter. See, when the Holy Spirit comes upon your life, he will breathe on you and he will comfort you and he will give you the strength that you need for, for what you are going through. And it doesn't matter the situation. It doesn't matter the trial. It doesn't matter how it looks. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. When the Holy Spirit begins to come and he begins to comfort you, there is breath that begins to be blown into your life. Romans 8.26 reads like this. The same way the Spirit also comes to help us 
weak as we are, for we do not know how we ought to pray, the Spirit himself pleads with God for us and groans the words cannot be expressed. The Spirit of God, plead, uh, the Spirit himself pleads with God on our behalf. And as you begin to get a hold of that, and you begin to understand that power, that there are angels and that there is the Holy Spirit that is going on your behalf to fight for you and to see you through what you are going through. When you understand that, you can't help but to walk with your head held high because you know that the power of God is with you. See, we could be in our workest t- weakest times and the Holy Spirit pleads with God on our behalf. That's powerful. The Holy Spirit pleads on our behalf. See, peace comes from the word of God because the helper, the Holy Spirit, will bring remembrance and all the things that God has said through his word. The Holy Spirit will bring remembrance through the word, the living word that is sharper than any two-edged sword, the word that is alive, the word that will help you. It will remind you. It will bring remembrance of what he says about you and I. His word says that he'll heal. His word says that he'll forgive. His word says that he will help you. His word says that you can have peace, that you can have everlasting life. When you begin to to allow the Holy Spirit to begin to help you and strengthen you, it begins to remind you. Not of what they said you were, but but what he said you are. And I don't know about you, but I would rather listen to God's word about my life than anybody else on the face of this earth today. Come on, give the Lord some praise today. Come on, give him some praise. Give him some praise like he's talking good about you because his word says good things about you. The helper, the Holy Spirit, will bring remembrance to all the things that God has said through his word. Through his word. So the first thing was is that when we are still He breathes peace in our lives. He breathes peace within our lives. I don't know about you, but we need peace within our lives. We we, we need to be able to walk with the peace of God within our lives. Because of this world and because of uh, what, what we may experience or because of certain things that may be going on within our lives today, we need the peace of God within our life. And I'll tell you this, is when you got the peace of God within your life, it doesn't matter how hot it gets. It doesn't matter how high the waters get. It doesn't matter how deep the valley goes. If you've got the peace of God within your life, you can begin to walk through those valleys. You can begin to walk through those circumstances and those situations because you know the peace of God is upon your life. And the second thing is when we are still, God breathes power in our lives. He breathes peace in our lives, but he also breathes power in our lives. 1 Corinthians 6.14 reads like this, And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Power comes from knowing who's in control. And that's a question I have for us here today. Who is in control of your life? When you know that God is in control of your life, there is power that will come upon your life. When you begin to understand and realize it's not your own ability, it doesn't matter how good you've gotten, it doesn't matter how good you look, it doesn't matter what you have, how much money you've got, how many houses you've got, what matters is, is when you know who is in control of your life, that's when power begins to come upon your life. Power that will push you through those things that come up within your life. And sometimes we don't realize the kind of power we have or that God has given us through the Holy Spirit. And sometimes we can take it for granted, the power that is in us, the power that is in our church, the power that is in our leaders, the power that is in our ministry. Sometimes we can take it for granted. I'll be honest with you. These last four weeks, it didn't matter who was preaching. It didn't matter who was singing. 
It didn't matter what kind of lights we've had. It didn't matter how it sounds. And I know many of you were just kind of looking at certain things because I used to do the same thing. But when you're in the presence of God and you've been praying, you've been getting the hold of God, it don't matter. None of those things don't matter. All that matters is, is that you got the power of God upon your life. Why? Because sometimes maybe we don't understand. Why is it sometimes we don't understand the power of God? Maybe it's because we're too busy asking questions. We're too busy talking and not listening. We're too busy saying, God, why this? And God, why that? And God, what, you know, what about this? And God, I feel this way. See, we, 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 we can't understand the power of God because we're too busy asking questions. And this happened to me. I began to say, God, why this? And God, why that? And God, all these different things, he began to rebuke me and say, it's not your job to question me. It's your job to trust me. It's not your job to say, why are you going through this? It's your job to say that I will trust you as you go through these different things. See, the disciples did this, and we do it too. Acts 1, verse 6 reads like this. It says, therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, Will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Question mark. They were asking questions. And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or season which the father has put his own authority. But, we, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria, Samaria and all ends of the earth. It is not for us to know the time, the seasons, which the Father has put his own authority. See, the problem that we have today as Christians, we're too busy asking why when we should be busy asking him and asking him and telling and, 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 and sharing and letting them speak to our hearts to see why we go through what we go through. See, many times we struggle. We struggle with the whys. And, the, and, and, and why do we need, why, why do, you know, we want all these different answers. When we should be more worried about just trusting him. See, we can't focus on the problems. We need to focus on the power of from heaven. And why is that? Because God will use situations in our lives to demonstrate the power of God. Then we could be witnesses and power, and, and witnesses of the power of God. We don't go through trials for nothing. That's what I told my daughter Amanda. That's what I told our family. We're not going to go through this for nothing. We're not going to go through this for nothing. We're going to get every single thing out of it. We are going to fight and we are going to we are going to move through this thing. We're not going to go through this for nothing. But you know what the Lord showed me that we're going to be able to be witnesses of his power. And that's what the world needs to see, is they need to see Christians that will be witnesses of his power, of his healing power, of his goodness, of his miracle-working power, of his saving power. We need people that will demonstrate the power of God through our lives. See, we have a choice. We have to choose how we're going to go through certain things in life. And that's what we talked about as a family. We said, you know what, we've got to decide right here and right now, how are we going to go through this? And as a leader of my family, I said, this is how we're going to go through it. And I know sometimes they may say, oh, I don't know if I could do that. I said, no, 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 no. If I'm the husband and I'm the dad and I'm the leader of this house, then this is how we're going to go through it. We're going to walk in victory and we're going to fight through it and we're going to give God praise because we got to make a choice. We've got to make a choice how we're going to serve God. We've got to make a choice how we're going to go through things. See, Judas ran, but Peter repented. And we've got to decide, are we going to run or are we going to repent? Are we going to run from things or are we going to go through what, uh, the, the battles that we've got to go through that are going to mold us and shape us to be the people that God has called us to be? I don't know about you. But God's called me to be a kingdom man. 
God's called my family to be a kingdom family. And God's called you to be a kingdom man. God's called you to be a kingdom woman. God's called you to be a kingdom family. He's called your kids to be kingdom kids. He's called our church to be a kingdom church. He's called our church to be a healing church. He's called our church to be a church of miracles, a church of power, a church of restoration, a church that will help people. But we can't do that without the power of God upon our lives. And how is this power downloaded into our lives? It's by being still and letting God breathe on us. And my third point as I get ready to close, and Matthew, come to the keyboard. And let's get ready to bring this in. And I want to I wanna pray tonight. The first thing was is that when we're still, God brings, breathes peace upon our lives. The second thing was is that when we're still, God breathes power in our lives. And the third thing is that when we are still, God breathes protection over our lives. Psalm 91 reads like this. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I don't know if you heard that. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He protects us. But it doesn't stop there. It says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snares of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. And he shall cover you with his feathers. And under his wings you shall take refuge. He protects us. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. He protects us. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow by that, that arrow that flies by day. He will be your protector. Nor of the pestilence that walk, walks in the darkness nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. He will be your protector. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. He will be your protector. When you learn to be still in the presence of God, he will protect you. He will be your protector. But it doesn't end there. It says, because you have made the Lord, who is your refuge, refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. He'll be your protector. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lions and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot because he has sent his love upon you. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy and show him my salvation. He will be your protector. When you learn to be still in the presence of God, he will be our protector. He will bring peace. He will fill our lives with power. And that's what we need is we need a church that will walk in peace. We need a church that will walk in power. And we need a church that will be protected. That will be protected. The theme or the promise of Psalms 91 
is pretty much summed up like this. Security or protection. God preserves those who abide in him and love him and who dwell in his presence. That's good news for us today. That's good news for the people of God. That's good news for his children. That Psalms 91 is a, is, is a theme or a promise of security and protection. What does that mean for us as the people of God? He will protect us. He will cover us. We, he will be our refuge. He, we will be able to hide under his wings. He will cover us. His anointing will overflow within our lives. And you know what that means? That means he will give us the strength that we need to do what he's called us to do. Because I believe this, God has called every single one of us. God has called every single one of us to help somebody, to reach somebody, and to make a difference. God is calling every single one of us. God is calling this church, and God wants to use our lives. And we're able to be that people, be that church, because he will protect us. Now let's read Psalms 46, verse 10 again. Be still and know that I am God. And I will be exalted among the nations, and I will be exalted in the earth. And the Lord of hosts is with us, and the God of Jacob is our refuge. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. It's not that easy to be still. I know. It's not that easy to be still. But you know when we could be still? Is when we're not too busy asking all the questions why. But just trusting in him. It is not our job to question, but it's our job to trust. I told you this message was birthed in the waiting room of the Lord. And we say, well, what has that got to do with me here tonight? How can this message relate to me here tonight? Like I said, I don't believe we should go through anything for, I don't believe we should go through trials. I don't believe we should go through circumstances and not get something out of it. I don't believe we should go through and not get something out of it. You know what the Lord put upon my heart? And I'm going to give it to you just the way he gave it to me. And actually, it wasn't just for me. It was for my daughter. He says, your pain is just preparation. Your pain is just preparation. Your pain is just preparation. If you've gone through some things or you've experienced some things within your life, it's only because God's getting you ready. He's getting you ready. He's preparing you for a promotion that he wants to do within your life. All he's doing is preparing you and strengthening you because when you go through pain and you go through things, what do you do? You get on your face before God because you can't help somebody if you don't know what pain is all about. You can't encourage somebody if you don't know what they're going through. You don't know what to tell somebody if you have not experienced it for yourself. And if God is going to raise up a church that is going to impact the city and impact the world, then we've got to understand what people are going through. Stand to your feet with me here tonight. Now, I know what you're thinking. Because I thought the same thing. I know what you're thinking. Do I have to go through things? Do I have to go through things to grow? But here's something I think we need to understand is that life will throw things at us. Life will throw things at you. Things are going to come up in life. Things are going to happen. But here's the thing is that we have a helper that will help us through the things that life throws at us. Let me say, is that always the best way? 
You know what I told the Lord? I said, Lord, I'm never going to hold back on my growth anymore. Because sometimes people can hold back on the growth. You hold back on changing. You hold back on changing things within your life. And I said, you know what, God? I'm not going to hold back on changing anymore. I'm going to keep growing, and I'm going to keep changing. I tell my kids, I said, you don't go through this for nothing. Change now. Change now. Change the way you think. Change the way you talk. Change the way you do things. Change now. Change. Change now. Change so that we can be the family and the people that God has called us to be. Change. So that God can use our lives to make an impact. Pain is only preparation. That's all it is. It's only preparation for where he wants to take us. Sometimes we'll go through things and we'll have to experience things. But here's the thing. It's okay because we serve a good God. We serve a God that will walk with us and that will see us through every step of the way. Come on. Come on. He'll see us through every step of the way. He's seen us through in the past. He's seen us through now. And he will always see us through in the future because we serve a good God. We serve a God that is able to see us through. And because of that, here's what happens. Is we begin to get stronger and we go deeper with God. I don't know about you, but I want to go deeper with God. I want more of God's power. I want more of God's peace. And I need more of God's protection upon my life. Come on, if that's you here tonight, I want you to give them a good hand here tonight. Say, you know what, that's, that's what I want. So here's what we're going to do. Is I want to open up these altars. And if this message has ministered to your heart, then I want you to come to these altars. If you say, you know what, I need peace, I need power, I need God's protection upon my life then I want you to come and just steward that seed that God has placed in your life. Come on. As we get ready to sing this song, I want you to get out of your seat. If it's ministered to you, if God has spoken to you, if you know God wants to use your life in a powerful and a special way, then I want you to come to this altar here tonight. I want to take a few moments to...